challenters and welcome believers. Yeah, baby. Today, we're going to talk about Justin Bieber's new song, Yummy. We're going to break down his documentary trailer for his new like docu-series seasons. And we're just going to kind of talk about what is going on with him and Haley. I don't even know if there's going to be a life lesson here. We just got to break down. We'll find something. We'll find something. But first, just want to remind you guys to head to my website, ChallenLester.com, where, yes, I am back accepting questions now. I was on a little bit of a Christmas break just to catch up. I'm still catching up on all the GoFundMe questions. Don't worry about that because you guys have been helping out, raising money for a homeless mom of Atlanta. No, 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 no. Homeless mom of three in Atlanta, you can do it. And I'm actually gonna be heading down there next week to talk to her and talk to some people who are supporting her and like, you know, showcase this journey so that we can all know where our money's going. We can have some of our questions about this situation answered and we can really figure out what more we can do to help and pull this family out of poverty. But yes, also my website, you're gonna find my merch collection, like this fabulous Enjoy and Destroy, I'm sure. We also got some Sweet and Savage, some Feminine Feminist, some other cool phrases. And be sure to follow me on Instagram for some daily inspiration. And I let you guys vote and weigh in on the next video topic, plus a lot of other stuff. So, just, okay, we're not gonna get, we're not gonna get to the lyrics first. First of all, with Justin, you guys know, if you're not new to this channel, you know how much I love Justin. Usually there's a framed picture of him sitting there from his Calvin Klein ad, but we've talked before about how Justin has lived his last fuckable day. The Justin I love the most is his what do you mean era Justin with like the hair, you know, like the blonde hair. And he's like, kind of kind of fit, like as fit as he's realistically gonna get. And he's got a few tats, but it's not like this, you know, prison gang situation. And now we need to really face the Fred Durstification of Justin, Justin Bieber. He has turned into Fred Durst 2.0. The trailer for his documentary seasons, and he's like wobbling around in these like triple XL gas station uniform beige dicky pants and a beanie. I'm like, you're not from Florida, like you're not, but you are though. You are actually from Tampa. I can see it, I feel like I can smell it. There's just been this de-evolution, devolving, devolvement, it's something like that, of Justin. And a big part of that is, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say drugs, but I'm not, not gonna say drugs. He has been, you know, sort of forthcoming about his past struggles, but it seems like things have, like that he was struggling with this worse than we knew. And who knows, maybe he still is. I have no idea. Hopefully not. But it's obvious that like shit has taken its toll. And that's the thing with drugs. Like I did a video a long time ago about like the truth about drugs. And the truth is drugs are really fun. They're really fun. And they don't ruin your life the first few times you do them. Maybe even the first 10, 20 times you do them, depending on what, you know, depending on what the drug is. But drugs are like bad food, you know? You can eat Papa John's every day for like quite a while before you really start beefing up. And you know what happens in that interim time before the consequences hit? You start to tell yourself a story. You say, <laughs> you guys, I am like the 1% who can eat whatever they want. I can eat whatever I want. You tell yourself that with drugs. It's like, I can just do Coke. And there's like, it's a fine, like I'm getting up. I'm going to work, I'm fine, I don't need it, I can still go to sleep, everything's fine. Like, I'm a cocaine one percenter. Boom, you hit this wall. And the wall might not be like, you stab your whole family, you get a DUI. The wall might be, you get a nosebleed in a meeting, or you can't sleep for two nights straight and you're like wired and you blow a presentation, you fail your midterm, like, but just like pizza, like no, you're not gonna wake up the next day and be 400 pounds, but you're gonna wake up and be like, I have done something now that I cannot undo. And it's gonna take me a really long time to get back to just the baseline where I was when I started. Forget getting back to a place where I was better. I just wanna get back to like the baseline. It's really difficult. So Justin seems to have changed a lot in the last four years. And what I noticed about his documentary is first and foremost, his voice. His voice, not his singing voice, his speaking voice is so different. It feels like, gravelly and eroded, like just stretched out too far. Like you just want to put him to bed or like 
put him like in a like a little incubator or something just cook him for a little while longer he just seems unhealthy but he does seem to address this in the documentary and we see a lot of him and Haley and Haley sort of seems to play this role of surprise surprise savior and angel now we've talked a lot about Haley and Justin before and I've always said that I think they're a cute couple because I think they really do love each other but I see a huge amount of codependency in their relationship he loves her but he needs her and because he needs her because he's the sick one he's the one in control and that's not how we think of sick people is it right we think oh they're sick they're so weak we feel so sad for them pity is control the number one thing a manipulative person or a sociopath wants is pity. Studies have shown this. This is not like my assessment. These are medical facts because pity makes us very malleable, right? We use pity in micro doses in our own life. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late. You know, my cat was sick and blah, blah, and she barfed all over the place. We, it's pity and people are like, oh, okay, that's all right. In the macro, people use this to be incredibly manipulative over a very long-term situation and a variety of of infractions like I think Justin is doing with Haley. The whole topic of this of this docu-series season seems to be all the ways he's fucked up. And doesn't he always release a movie or a documentary as his tour of contrition? Right? The last thing he did was like after he was peeing in the mop bucket and getting a DUI and doing all this shit on Xanax. Like that's when he had to do another like, I'm growing up and I'm in the spotlight. It's like rinse and repeat. It's the exact same messaging over and over and over. But what's different now is he has Haley, right? He's always had Scooter who's just like, I don't know, who's like profiting. Scooter's his own thing. Blech. And I've done a lot of videos on Scooter and Taylor Swift and that whole peccadillo. But Haley is here now as this sort of this. She literally looks like an angel. She's like blonde and like radiant and just like smiling at the hoop earrings and the, the cute little bun and when I do a bun I look like like I've got a rat tail but she's swooping in and saving him and therefore he's got the power now we think we think that when we're rescuing someone we've got the power but no think about when you're dealing with a friend who's wasted like blacked out can't stand up slurring all the words you're in control in so far that you're problem solving, but they're steering the ship. Everything is orienting around them and their limitations, right? So you have someone who's chronically depressed, who's chronically a drug addict, they're in control, and that is what keeps those people in that situation. We as human beings don't do things that don't work. We don't. We don't keep touching hot coals. We don't keep drinking dirty water. We do things that we get a payout from. And sick people, whether they're constantly blacked out and their friends are always taking care of them, always making sure they get that piece of pizza, getting home in an Uber, Uber safe, still inviting them out, they're getting the emotional payout of elasticity, of attention, of no consequences. And Justin is getting a payout too, perhaps the same one. He gets to orient everything around his issues. And all he has to do is pull that little string, I'm sick, I'm broken, and Haley comes running. All the pictures of them from this documentary, just this two minute trailer is her like cuddling up to him, holding him, petting him. It's very motherly. He's not really doing that for her. It's not, Haley is going through something, let me be there for her. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. That's not the way it is. And that's not the way it's ever gonna be. How do we know that? That wasn't her parents' relationship. We talked about this before. Her parents, whichever Baldwin it is, Stephen, Drake Baldwin, I have no idea, whatever. There's so many of them and yet there's really only one of them like they have the exact same face so i'm like which one are you like they just like split like little russian nesting dolls when they need to like Haha! her parents have been together for a very long time and her dad was an addict forever now he's a born again christian literally i couldn't decide which is more annoying and the mom has been rock solid right there sticking by his side and society tells us that's what we have to do right that's marriage that's fidelity. That's love. I personally don't subscribe to that definition of love. Love to me is reciprocal. Love to me is not one person is hemorrhaging their energy, their affection, their time, their money, everything towards this other sick, needy, whatever it is thing. That's not love. That's parenthood. That's fucking parenthood, yo. And no thanks. 
I went through this with my boyfriend. Like I said, it's like I could be parenting an actual child. That's what women my age are doing. They're not parenting their 26-year-old boyfriend. They're parenting a, ch- a six-month-old baby because at least that baby obeys, right? At least you actually do have the control there. But we know watching parents with toddlers, no, you do not. So Justin and Haley's relationship has always been a bit worrisome from that standpoint. But like I said, I do like them together. I think they're cute and they're sweet and they're just this like, I don't know. I like them. Maybe because I'm just like obsessed with her. (laughs) You know I love her. I love her. So I'm rooting for them. I am not necessarily rooting for Justin's new song. Because yeah, Justin has perhaps lived his last fuckable day. Do we talk about that already? I don't know because I think about it a lot. And I love his songs. Like if I get drunk, like if I'm that blacked out friend, I can say but one word. Bieber, Bieber, Bieber. It's like a chant. All I want to hear is Justin Bieber. I don't want pizza. I don't want to call an ex. I want to hear Justin motherfucking Bieber. And you'd be surprised how few um, Uber drivers are into that. Okay. Oh, is this just now not? Yeah, no, don't, don't do what I need you to do. You have one job. You literally sit here. You have one job. But no. No. Okay. I can't embed the song. Well, I could, but I'd have to demonetize the video. No. Justin Bieber's not costing me the bag. So we're just going to read the lyrics because they truly are funnier if you just read them. Like, there's so many songs that you're like, this is a good song. And then you, like, extrapolate just the lyrics. You're like, this could have been written by a monkey. I'm, I'm not going to do them all because they're, you got that yummy yum. The song is called Yummy. Okay. First of all, I hate the word yummy. Like, it's up there with nom, like noms, nom, nom, nomers. I just got them. I just got douche chills. I got them. I get physically ill when I hear these terms. Like ginormous. I think it's tacky and low class. Like there are just so many words that are, please comment the words you hate the most. Can we do this? Can we do like a consortium of like hated vocabulary, like the vocab no fly list? I would love it. I would love it. I hate yummy. That was yummy. Shut the fuck up, Karen. Ridiculous. Like, you're my favorite human. You're a special human. Live off love. (laughs) Okay. You got that yummy yum. That yummy yum. That yummy yummy. Say the word on my way. Yeah, babe. Yeah, babe. Yeah, babe. (laughs) This is torture. In the morning or the late, say the word on my way. Damn, girl. Let's take our time tonight. Red lipstick, blonde hair, long legs. Got me crazy. So clearly this is about Haley. So let's pause here. I don't know what it is, but it's like this unwritten social construct that the more serious you are with someone, the less you talk about your sex life with them. And I don't know quite when that tipping point occurs. I think it occurs when you become like official boyfriend, girlfriend. There's just this sort of level of intimacy. And it's not even like, oh, I don't want to share it. It's that people don't want to hear it. Like if someone was like, oh yeah, my husband in bed and then he took his hand and put it there. I'd be like, stop, stop it, stop. You are, I am, no, this is, talk about a vocab don't fly zone. So it's weird that he's like doing a sex song about his wife. Is it just me? Is that weird? It's like not weird when it's about a girlfriend. I don't know. Am I alone on this? It goes on. Bonafide stallion ain't no stable. Is he talking about her? Stallions are males. Bonafide stallion ain't no stable. No stay on the run any night, any day. Say the word on my way. Did he write this in like a hostage situation? Where are the conjunctions? Yeah, babe. Yeah, babe. Yeah, babe. Yeah, babe. You got that yummy yum. That yummy yum. That yummy yummy. Can you imagine? I want you, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to picture having sex with a guy and he goes down on you and then he starts using the word yummy this many times to describe your body and what he's doing. That was yummy. You, you got that yummy yum. That yummy yum. That yummy yum yummy. That yummy. You're, I'd be like, get out of my fucking house. Get out of my house. I have a shotgun behind the headboard of my bed. Get out now. <laughs> or that's the last word you're ever going to say. You stay flexing on me. Yeah, you got that yummy. Oh my God, there's so much. Oh, this, I'm sorry. This was it. These were all the, I thought there was a whole other. No, there is though. There, there are like. I know that there's more lyrics. Hold on.
Okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 50-50, love the way you split it. 100 racks, help me spend it, babe. Light a match, get Liddy, babe. Do people still say Liddy? That jet set, watch the sunset, kinda. Yeah, yeah, rolling eyes back in my head, make my toes curl. Hop in the Lambo, I'm on my way. These are all just so lame. These are just like copy and pasted from like the, the lame playbook, like guys who pose like this in photos, like that's, the, this is their lyric, okay? Drew House slippers with a smile on my face. I'm elated that you are my lady. Justin, Justin, I am willing to extend your last fuckable day into a date in the future if you stop trying to make Drew House happen. Can you stop trying to make it happen? It is so ugly. I have learned to live with the fact that I am alive during the golden age of Yeezy, okay? I don't like it, I don't appreciate it. I've made peace with it though. I will, this is a bridge too far. Drew House is so, ah. Like I get sent a lot of free clothes like from working in magazines or whatever. Even if someone sent this shit to me for free, I wouldn't wear it. Like Fear of God, Alexander Wang, maybe a Yeezy hoodie here and there. Ugh. Elite Daily says Justin Bieber's yummy lyrics are so steamy they'll make you blush. You realize there's like porn on the internet, right? Like I've seen like unbearable, you know. Let's see. Did I miss any of these lyrics? I don't know why nobody just has like these stupid lyrics written down. Here's, okay. Standing up, keep me on the rise. It's about an erection. Lost control of myself, I'm compromised. Bro, don't put in a song that you come too quick. You're incriminating, no disguise. No disguise. You ain't never running low on supplies. Like school supplies, like Elmer's glue, that's what I'm picturing. Oh yeah, these are, I mean, these are bad. These are just, hop in the Lambo. Oh God, we went over that. It's not exactly a Lord Byron poem. Do you know what I mean? And the worst part is I don't even think Justin wrote this song. Like, I still think this is like out of the realm of his like songwriting abilities. Like he's never been the king of lyrics, right? Like love yourself, Halsey wrote. I mean, maybe like just because it's important to understand that just because a, an artist is credited as a songwriter there's this, um, there's this term in the songwriting community, I, th I think it's called like 30 minutes, third of the profit, something like that. But it's like, if you're in the room for 30 minutes of the songwriting process, you are entitled to be a co-writer on the song. And we've talked about Beyonce, how she doesn't write any of her songs, she's a bit of a simpleton, and but she demands to be a co-writer. And her and Sia got into this like blood feud years ago because Sia's like, no, I'm not listening to you as a fucking co-writer, no. And Beyonce's like, you are. And Sia's like, no. Nah. You are. Ah. And so they were like head to head for a long time. I guess they buried the hatchet, whatever. But even if you see someone's name on here, I don't think so. Because these artists, they can just wield this power and be like, well, then I'm not buying your song. You can you can share the profits with me and you're going to, the song's going to sell 100 million copies or you can just throw it in the trash because that's where it's going to go because no one else is going to buy it. So they have, it's like extortion basically. Is that what extortion is? So Justin, I don't, I feel like I'm sorry that I don't have this big thesis statement for this video other than I, I just don't know that a lot has changed with Justin. I hope that it has. I hope that it has because I love him. I think he's so incredibly talented. I think he really has been through it growing up in the spotlight. Like I just know what I do here on this channel and having people weigh in and opinions and all this stuff and like what people need from you and it's a lot. And this is like, not I'm a non-existent thing compared to like Justin Bieber. So he really has gone through it. He has no viable relationship with either of his parents. We've talked about that in videos too. 
But I'm curious what you guys have to say. If you think this is a turning point, if we are entering a golden age, a renaissance, one might say, of Justin Bieber, a bieber -sance. uh, Or if this is like him kind of circling the drain and continuing to Fred Durst himself. Does he need to cut it out with the tattoos? Spoiler alert, yes. If you have an opinion that he doesn't, you're just, you're wrong. Not all opinions are wrong. That one is wrong. <laughs> that one's wrong. I want to know what else you guys want to know about Justin. We can keep on talking about him as much as you want because I will talk about Justin the rest of my life. And I will. Every time I'm drunk until I'm 85 years old in my, in my feeble wheelchair. One word. Beeper. <laughs> For more, click like and subscribe. And like I said, follow me on social media at ShallonXO and head to my website, ShallonLester.com. If you want to get some help with the love question, just click get help and shop my merch. Also take some fun quizzes, quizzes to see what your social media is saying to the world. I'll see you soon, believers and Shalloners.